It's been a little bit of a busy afternoon in the weather office. Yeah, we've, we've actually been kind of earning our keep severe weather-wise lately. And, uh, yeah, all right. Yeah, for now, but, you know. <laughs> but um, there's not a ton of storms out there tonight, guys, just a few, and you know where they are, right? Mm -hmm. Sebago Lake area. It's, mm -hmm. it's just they, like they, they know They expect it. Yeah, it's like clockwork uh, out there. We have severe thunderstorm watch boxes uh, here into New Hampshire and then trimmed back into upstate New York as well. Let's have a look at, there's two cells actually, and they're both trained right towards Sebago. One has moved over and it's into uh, Naples and Raymond. And this one, they had a tornado possible tag on it. They've dropped that. I don't see any real rotation out of this anymore, but there could be some hail and some straight line winds. And then they went ahead and they uh, hit this one right behind it with a severe warning as well. My guess is with that, they're looking at this little appendage right towards Brownfield. And sometimes when these get like a little spun this direction, you look at some rotation in there and get a little concerned. So <clears throat> I didn't get a chance to read this text. It just came out, but that's probably tagged as a tornado possible one as well. Then there's a break and most of us will wait for this line to come through uh, in the next couple of hours, more consistent rain, especially over southern Maine. There's enough fuel in the atmosphere. You'll notice the dew points have changed a lot. We had a two day break. The break is over upper 60s and low 70s for dew points. And that matters when it comes to sustaining storms, but also uh, it matters because it gives you more moisture for rain. So it gives you more what we call precipitable water in the atmosphere. So this model has it coming through seven o'clock. I mean, it's going to have to move real fast to get here that quick. I think it's going to be closer to eight before this line moves through some thunderstorms, but some downpours more likely and then quickly diminishing the threat by 10, 11 o'clock tonight. After that, we'll get partly cloudy. It's a sticky night and tomorrow has really changed a lot. If you haven't watched since the weekend or Monday, it looked like it was going to be fairly cloudy, fairly showery. And then we said, okay, maybe just some scattered showers. And now maybe not even many showers at all and just hot temperatures into the upper 80s along the coastline. Dew points are still high through the first half of the day. Isolated thunderstorm I still have in the forecast, but I'll tell you what, I think a lot of us end up dry through the whole day. Then we have some clouds and showers along the coastline overnight tomorrow night. We get those out in time for uh, Saturday and the weekend looks great. It's looked good the whole time. Lower dew points, temperatures in the 80s there. High pressure builds in. That's the weekend and then we start to warm back up on the backside. Looks pretty hot next week. There's a mega ridge across the middle part of the country, way above average. The question is going to be how much of that heat can Maine get in on? I think some of it. I think we'll have at least one really hot day. I just don't know if it's Thursday or Friday of next week, but it's a week away. So we'll find out. Uh, looks really nice again over the weekend. Hot in Monday, the humidity comes back too, guys. I think next week is a very summery stretch. Uh, Boston has another chance to hit 100 late in the week. We probably won't get there, but. They're welcome to it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Keith.